my word. Girlfriend. You got to be kidding me. Uh, I don't know. Girlfriend. Come here, chicky lady. What are you doing that far up, girl? Oh my gosh. Girl. Come on, lady. Am I going to be rescuing a chicken off the roof? Oh my word. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda. I make videos documenting our homesteading journey. And today we are going to be making my favorite homemade sandwich bread. This recipe that I have written down here makes two loaves and I'm gonna read off the ingredients that you need. Um, I might see if I could throw in a screenshot here of the recipe and all of the items that you're gonna need. So we need seven cups of bread flour, three cups of water, two tablespoons or two packages of instant yeast, three teaspoons of salt, and two tablespoons of oil. Um, something that I've been doing recently is adding in one egg. Um, that kind of helps it stay together a little bit more. We were struggling with my loaves um, crumbling a little bit after a few days of, you know, just being in the in the bread box, and I'm trying different methods of of like covering the bread. Um, if you put it in a Ziploc, it can mold too quickly. If you put it in just a tea towel, it seems to get crusty too quickly. Um, so now. I just ordered everything to make my own beeswax wraps. That way it can be more of a moisture barrier and keep some of that moisture in the bread in, but it's also breathable. I've read a lot of things online saying that um, beeswax wraps is the way to go, so we're gonna make those. Um, not in this video, I might do another video on that. I've never done it before, so you know, we gotta try new things and see what works. <laughs> so we might do that video. Um, but today it's just the bread. I just want to show you how I make this. I like to make this once a week. Um, I keep one loaf out for my family and then I slice the second loaf once it's cooled and I throw that in a Ziploc bag, in a freezer bag, and I throw it in my freezer. That way that second loaf doesn't like mold and get crusty too quickly. If you keep it in the fridge, or excuse me, in the freezer, and then pull it out when you're ready. I keep it in the fridge after I pull it out of the freezer. I don't let it come to room temperature. Um, I just keep it in the fridge and that keeps it, um, that slows down that crumbly drying out process. And then I just take out as I need, make the sandwiches, make the toast, make whatever. And then um, it just seems to be working pretty good so far for me. Uh, the one thing that um, I do wanna say is with these loaves, if you do have the ends or if you get a loaf that sat out on the counter too long or something and it started to get crusty and you don't want to eat it, don't throw it away. Make homemade breadcrumbs. That's what I've been doing. Um, I don't think I have any that I can show you right now. Oh yeah. Um, I made some homemade Italian breadcrumbs. Um, all I did was chop up my loaf into cubes um, and then I placed them on um, a baking sheet and I threw them in the oven at I want to say 400 or 425, a higher heat, and then I let it go for about five minutes, and I just kept checking, and I wanted those to be nice and crusty, like really, really dried out. Um, and so once they were dried out to the point where I thought they would crumble pretty well, you can kind of judge that by crushing them in your hands, and if they begin to crumble, pull them out, throw them in a blender or a food processor, whip them up as fine as you want them and just uh, throw in some throw in some uh, Italian seasoning or you can leave them plain to leave plain breadcrumbs um, I like to throw in <laughs> yes hello Olivia I like to throw in Italian seasoning because that's the kind that we use the most um, sometimes we'll need plain breadcrumbs so I do that every once in a while but super easy to make once I put that seasoning back into um, the breadcrumbs I put it back on my sheet pan and I throw it back in the oven for another five or so minutes just to really finish making sure that it's dried out. Then I pull it out of the oven, let it sit at room temperature until they're nice and cooled, and then you can store them in any container you want. So with that, let's get going on this bread and I'll show you how it's made. So here I'm just gonna add my water and my yeast. And then I also like to add just a teaspoon of sugar Kind of helps the yeast activate, gives it a little something to feed on. 
Um, this is optional. You don't have to do it. It's not written in my recipe, but I just did it um, just because it's something I that I like to do as a little insurance. kind of helps get the uh, yeast going. So I just mix it up, and then I'm just going to let it sit. Um, I usually let it sit from anywhere 5 to 10 minutes. It's all in kind of how your house is for temperature. If it's kind of a colder house, you might want to let it sit longer like me. Um, otherwise, 5 minutes should be good enough. After it's sat, you want to make sure by proofing it means that it's all foamy like that. That means that your yeast is active and not dead. So now at this point, it's ready to go. The yeast is good. And I'm going to start adding in the flour a little bit at a time. Now once I get a few cups of flour in, now is when I'm going to add my salt. I'm just going to throw it on in there and then I'm going to go ahead and add um, the oil and my egg. The egg is optional. The egg was just something that I've been doing just because I've been seeing different results in my bread with it. Just making sure that it's my bread sticks together. That was the whole purpose of adding the egg in there. And I think it makes a difference, but you can completely omit the egg if you choose. And once you get to the point where you can't really mix in the flour with your tool anymore, I just try and pull off as much of the dough that I can, and then I'm gonna start incorporating the rest of the flour by hand. Okay, once we get all of the flour incorporated into the dough, now is the time when we're going to start kneading and you want to knead the dough for eight minutes. Don't skip skimp on that eight minutes. That's very important. It's really important to get it all worked in well and really break down the dough structure and make it nice and smooth. Here you can see how smooth it's gotten from my eight minutes. It is definitely an arm workout, I promise you. Okay, you see that? How smooth. 
that dough is. And it's not sticking to my hands. And it's not like dry and crusty. It's nice and Play Doh y almost. It's like Play Doh. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. I'll drop you back down here and I'll form it into a little ball as best I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now we're going to let this rest on the counter for three minutes. Alexa, start a timer for three minutes. What's this? Mm, Hang on one sec, sweetie. So we're going to let this sit for three minutes, and then once it has sat, we're going to lightly flour the top of the dough, and we'll turn it over, and then we'll kind of flatten it out and smooth it into a ball, and then we're going to place it back in this bowl, which is why I tried to scrape everything out of there that I could. We're going to um, oil this bowl really well, and we will place the ball in here and we'll let it sit here and rise for about an hour. My house is kind of cold, so it might be more than an hour, but we want it to double in size. So we'll let this sit and we'll be right back. Our three minutes is up. We've let it sit here for three minutes and just kind of rest, which it's already starting to rise. Um, I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit like that. I kind of want to roll it up into a nice tight ball like that it's not perfect but it's it'll do I'm not gonna flour it like I said I'm just gonna leave it plain because I already oiled the bowl I don't want to add any more flour to this stuff I got going on here so I'm gonna leave that sit and now we're gonna let it sit for an hour and we'll see if we can get it to double in size. This whole bowl should be easily filled up. Um, it, it, doubling in size should make this whole bowl, bowl fill up is what I was trying to say. But we'll let it sit, throw the towel over it, and we'll be back in an hour. Okay, it's been about an hour and 10 minutes roughly. I stuck this in my microwave because it's a nice controlled warm area um, with the light on in my, how do I explain this? Let's see. I left my, ah, my uh, light on, my, my, oh my goodness, words aren't working. My light underneath my microwave, because I have this microwave with the light underneath, and that helped really heat it up in here. So it was nice and toasty in there. That was a lot harder than it needed to be explained. <laughs> but anyway, I just pulled it out. And it, <clears throat> it definitely doubled. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that we're doubled, we're going to punch it down. Roll it out. And now all we're going to do is split it into two roughly equal pieces. Just like that. Take them and try and just roll it into a little bit of a ball, kind of like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, however, however you want to shape them. So now we have these two ready to go. We're going to let them sit for 15 minutes. Then we're going to flatten them out and shape them to the size of our pans. And we'll get them on their final rise after these 15 minutes are up. Okay, 15 minute rest is up. And they did rise a little bit while sitting here. I've got these two pans greased and ready to roll. So I'm going to use one at a time as like my guide on how thick I want to press this. Let me see if I can bring you closer here. Um, so I'm just kind of going to flatten it out as best as I can. I'll bring in the sides a little bit. And I'm just going to taper it so it's easier to roll. And I'm going to try and tight roll this thing as best as I can here. Oh, that kind of got ugly. Why did it do that? We'll redo this. This dough's pretty forgiving, so. 
We'll taper it for the right size. Okay. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, pop that in there. Next up is this one. That's what I did. I forgot to flip it. So on the bottom, this is where I pinched it. That's why it was kind of ugly. So if you take the smooth side and flip it, I forgot to flip it. Now I'm going to smooth it out. And tight roll it. Like that. One second. And I like this pan better. This is the Magnolia... Uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines, their line at Target. Um, this is that pan. My husband got me a set for uh, Christmas, I believe it was. And I love the way that this pan makes my bread look um, compared to just this regular loaf. This is a Wilton loaf pan. But anyway, here's my two. We're going to take this, cover them up, and I'm probably going to stick them back in my... Um, Microwave and we're gonna let them sit for another hour and rise Okay, it's actually only been about 50 minutes, but These have gotten really big That's okay They're pretty large See what I mean about this loaf though the, Or this pan I should say this pan does a way better job at making a better shaped loaf if that makes sense um, so then these are my two. I'm careful not to bust them down. I don't want to deflate them. But there they are. I wonder if I can get you closer and out of that line of sight of the microwave. There we go. Much better. This tripod's been real helpful. Okay. So I just had a mishap on the stove here. I was making chocolate syrup so that I could make homemade um, chocolate milk for the kids. And it boiled over because I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, we're going to disregard that, but these are ready to go in. Look how nice and big that is. We're going to put these in for 30 minutes, and then we'll be right back. Um, I should specify that that's 30 minutes in the oven at 400 degrees. Um, I just throw them in, and I kind of check them. You'll know, you'll know when they're ready, because then that top will get nice and golden brown, um, and then it won't be, it won't be doughy feeling. Um, so we'll look at that when they come out and I can kind of show you what to look for. But usually four, 400 degrees at 30 minutes is kind of the sweet spot for these loaves. Um, these are the loaves that I'm planning to sell. Um, this spring, we are going to be setting up our own farm stand um, in our own town here. And so I want to be offering extra produce that we have. I'm going to be offering baked goods. Hang on, Livy calls. Okay, um, farm stand, and I want to offer the extra produce we have, um, baked goods, I want to be offering things like my sourdough loaves, I want to offer these sandwich breads for our community to have fresh baked sandwich bread. Um, I'm actually going to probably try and take this same recipe and start adding in some fresh milled flour so I can make it even more fresh than just bread flour out of a bag. And so I'm going to be trying that. I'm going to be doing cinnamon rolls. I want to be doing just regular dinner rolls. Um, all kinds of baked goods. Uh, focaccia bread with my sourdough. That's super good. That's one of my favorite sourdough recipes ever. Um, I'm actually, I don't think I've, uh, maybe I did do a video on it. I'm not sure. If I haven't done a video on focaccia bread, that might be one of my next sourdough videos that we do. Because that one is killer. And the recipe that I use, um, is a free recipe. Uh, it's on a blog. I can't remember the name of her blog, but um, she shared the recipe. So I'll be able to share that recipe with you and direct you over to her blog to show you kind of, she's a pretty good sourdough queen. She's awesome. Um, but we can bake that together. Um, so I can just kind of bring you along and show you the things that we want to offer as baked goods for our community. Just fresh baked goods to share. Um, some other things I want to be offering are my plant starts. Um, if I have extra tomatoes and peppers and things like that, I'm going to start more plants. So if someone else wants to buy them and put them in their garden, um, I'm going to do kind of different varieties than what our local nursery offers. So that way I'm just kind of supplementing 
to our community rather than taking away business from our other community places. So I'm going to be doing that. And then I also have um, house plant starts. Um, like I've propagated some of my spider plants. I have a plain spider plant, a variegated spider plant. And then I also have Cebu pothos, Cebu blue pothos that I have a bunch ready to go. They got to go like now because <laughs> they're actually sitting on my shelf where my seedlings are going. So if anybody is watching this video in the local Valley City area of North Dakota, <laughs> Hit me up because I have some Cebu Pothos that could be yours. <laughs> they need to get out of here. Um, but it's just fun to do, just to propagate. When my plants make little babies, I don't want to just like trim them and throw them away. So I end up potting them up and then I have more plants than I can deal with. So I figured I could share that at our um, farm stand in town when we do that. And then um, what else was I wanting to offer? Oh, flowers. I'm going to be doing uh, cut flowers. Oh, I love it. I see you over there. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be planting a bunch of flowers this year. You know, while we wait for this uh, bread to uh, bake, I think I'll show you the flowers that I'm going to be doing this year. Okay, so here's some echinacea that I'm going to plant. Um, that's for me for more for the roots, um, for, um, for our garden and our home. Uh, I make tincture with this, um, with echinacea root for sickness. Bee balm, I'm not sure if that's much of a cut flower, but I definitely wanted this for the pollinators. I wanted it for the butterflies and the bees in our yard. These are going to be cut flowers, some big, beautiful white zinnia. This one is gorgeous. This flower burst fruit bowl yarrow. Oh my goodness. That's definitely an ornamental that I could cut, and it's also medicinal. White borage, that is also medicinal, but could be used as just a flower. Um, these Autumn Beauty sunflowers, along with other sunflowers I want to plant. Look how cute the little bee and the, and the monarch are on there. So beautiful. Mm, I can't see. wait to do... See those? I can't That's wait to do those. Cute. You gonna help me with these? Awesome. Aztec Sunset Zinnias. Mommy, can I say hi? One minute, sweetheart. Gourds. I've never done this before, but I'm very curious to see if I can grow loofah here. So <laughs> we're gonna try this on one of our trellises. And then I got free lettuce for ordering through Baker Creek. Here's one that I want to offer the community is the Cherokee Purple Tomato. Amish paste is already offered, so this is more for me. Um, the Black Cherry Tomato, that's another one I want to offer the community. And I love them. They're really good to snack on. More paste. And then basil. I'm going to have so much basil, it's not even funny. So I'm hoping I can offer lime basil. Um just as bunches to sell. Please stop, Olivia. Mm -hmm. um, just to sell to the local community because it's super good. Um, the toothache plant, that's kind of neat. You're supposed to be able to chew on it and it's going to be numb. It's going to be a numbing effect on your mouth. So I'm going to try that just because it was fun. I got lemon. So I got lemon and lime basil. You can make basil tea. I want to experiment with that this year. Isn't this one beautiful? Prairie Fire Tomatoes. That's another one I want to start and offer to our community. And then I got just melons. And then obviously I needed milkweed because I really want to get some butterflies in our area. So we're going to be adding some milkweed. I do have more cut flowers that I want to plant, but they're not in this bunch that I had inside that I wanted to show you quick. You can say hi to everyone. Hi. <laughs> what else did you want to say? Nothing else. That's it? Yeah. Okay. You gonna be my big garden helper this year? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay. They're out of the oven. I put some butter on the top just for flavor and it kind of softens up that crust a little bit too. And they're nice and solid. You want to hear. It's like ASMR for bread or whatever, but nice and you can hear that it's it's done all the way through because it's almost like a hollow sound but that's one way they're nice and golden and they're not falling down that's one way to know that they're not doughy in the middle here's my other one and yeah there they are and here's the bread right 
out of the pan. I let it cool down to room temperature and I popped it right out of the pans. I just had oiled my pans with a little bit of olive oil. And then once they cooled down and came to room temperature, they came out no problem. So here they are and they look great just beautiful and golden and then I did get this slicer off of Amazon and I highly recommend it. it it has been a game changer for us I'm gonna link it down in the description um, I don't have an affiliate link set up yet because you have to have X amount of people click on it and buy stuff and I'm just not to that point yet but I still want to share this with you guys because if you do choose to start making bread at home and you're gonna be making it weekly highly recommend this just to help you get those nice cuts and beautiful bread every time. Okay, the bread is now cooled down and I'm gonna finish cutting out this loaf and I'm gonna put one loaf completely sliced in Ziploc bags and throw it in the freezer and the other one we're gonna keep out to keep fresh. Um, I will link that uh, bread slicer that I have down in the description. Um, it's been super handy because it makes the cuts super accurate. I mean, you can think you're hitting it and making the cut super accurate and then you grab your piece and it's super thick on the top and skinny on the bottom so highly recommend getting one of these if you're going to be baking bread for your family like every week it's definitely worth the investment they're not super expensive um they're just really helpful to have so i hope you give this recipe a try and if you do let me know in the comments what you think about it um i can't wait to show you guys some more bread recipes that i have and some more things we're going to be doing on the farm stand so thanks for joining me and i hope you guys have a great week Bye.